Good morning over there. That's beautiful stuff to see those wild dogs and Pete with on that on that kill with those dogs. Uh, we've just been scooting around looking for other leopard, looking for Mvula as well. Uh, I'm not really sure where he has gone. Um, just constantly just checking, 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 looking for tracks and then listening to the radio as well. I just stopped here because this is an interesting uh, zebra. The zebra here is a, a, a young stallion. Uh, and he's just grazing away on the verge of the road here on these, this more sort of tender grass. And uh, but there's something very interesting about his tail, as you can see. <coughs> he's uh, he's gotten on the other side of a, an attempted, uh, an attempt potentially attempted uh, attack by a predator, or it could have been a, in a fight uh, with another zebra. He could have lost a bit of it. You just don't know. But he's definitely got a very very shiny tail there, and uh, they use that tail a lot to swap flies. So the the poor little guys are. Uh, struggling a little bit there but he's still alive which is the most important thing uh, but grazing away on this beautiful sort of tender grass right on the edge of this this road and just up a little bit further is a wildebeest um, and they often uh, congregate together in much greater herds um, but interesting just to see them here. Don't, we haven't seen many zebras lately, so I just thought we'd stop and uh, have a quick look at him. You do hear uh, a few beeps and a few uh, little uh, conversations going on on our Game Drive channel if you've just joined us, folks, so you'll hear beeps and uh, carry on, so please don't worry about that. Uh, it's just the radio going off like that. Okay. Let's move on. He's a beautiful boy. Let's just see if we can get up a bit closer. He might let us just sit here close to him for a second. Hello, my boy. Okay. It's okay. Sometimes it's nice with animals just to uh, pull up and let the engine run for a little bit and uh, just get them used to you and then button off when they've gotten used to the noise. He's very comfortable. So I've got a question from uh, from Sherry in Los Angeles. Sherry, welcome aboard and thanks for watching on Safari Live this morning. Uh, it's a good question, Sherry, about the, about leopards. Uh, this zebra's still just grazing over here whilst we talk. Uh, your question is that you've you've heard that leopards are the the most elusive of all the cats. Well. Uh, that's very, very true. Uh, they are very elusive, and we don't see them as often, well, in some parts of uh, Africa, because they're solitary, whereas lion prides are, you know, they're quite big, sometimes up to, you know, 15, 20 animals in a, in a super pride. You can get even more up in East Africa. But the point of that is that uh, <clears throat> you can normally see a lot more lion tracks. You normally see a, a greater mass of these cats. But the solitary cats are a little bit more tricky to find. Um, they have been over the years, and you'll probably know this with most predators uh, all across northern, uh, the northern and southern hemisphere, when there's a, a human animal conflict situation uh, where you've got uh, animals taking farmers or, or livestock or, or humans for that matter, um, you will have a situation where the predator will be persecuted. Uh, undoubtedly persecuted and be pushed away. They do over time start to get a very, very uh, strong sense that humans are danger. So they will stay away. As soon as they see you, they'll stay up, they'll, they'll, they'll run. You will get situations where lions or, uh, or others uh, may uh, 
end up preying on humans in a situation in a rural community or something like that, tigers, uh, other big predators as well, which isn't fantastic, of course, but uh, then you'll also have a human-animal conflict situation. And in Sabi Sands, what we have, uh, and particularly where we are on Juma and Arethusa, your question is, is it because the animals have been habituated uh, for a very, very long time to, uh, to the vehicles and people? The answer is yes. There's been a lot of hard work that's gone into the habituation and the conditioning of the animals to show the animals that we are not dangerous. We are actually just here to observe. Um, we learn about the distance to keep from the animals, and over time the animals accept us as part of the landscape. That's exactly what happens, and it's a fantastic question, Sherry. So thank you very, very much, and thanks for being with us this morning. Okay, we're going to say... <coughs> we're just going to say goodbye to our Mr Zebra friend here. Thanks, mate. How are you? He's really, really comfortable with us, so I just thought we'd stop a little bit further. We've just got another vehicle uh, I wanted to let uh, come up nice and close. Um, lovely markings on his legs there. Such a unique, unique pattern on this animal. If you've got any questions, folks, please, you're more than welcome to fire a question off to us. If you want to tweet it to us at hashtag Safari Live, or you can uh, email us questions at wildearth.tv. Uh, more than welcome. You can see how those beautiful lips. This is a, this is a horse with stripes, folks. You, you, you can see all the similarities. Uh, it is in the same family as horses. It's, uh, it's just a magnificent wild horse, in the, a wild animal in the horse family that's got stripes. Um, and what an incredible creature it is. Uh, all different stripe patterns, and there's different uh, subspecies. There's the Grevy zebra, which have got very, very tight patterns up in East Africa that don't have that shadow stripe that you can see on the on the rump. Oh, there, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Andrew. That shadow stripe is a, a very a great uh, characteristic of the, the Birchalls or the plain zebra. And then you've got the Grevy zebra that doesn't have that stripe. Very, very tight pattern. And then you've got the Hartman's Mountain Zebra as well, uh, over in uh, Namibia. Much more desert dwelling, don't congregate in such large groups. Uh, much more sort of around 10 to 14 animals and uh, dispersed into the mountains there. So incredible creatures. There also used to be another wonderful creature called the Quagga, uh, which unfortunately uh, died out or became extinct uh, last century. But... We've still got these wonderful creatures, luckily, and he is quite the comfortable stallion with us. I'm sure many of you know this anyway, but uh, just for people that have joined us, or it might be your first safari, um, that, that coat pattern or uh, those markings are individual to every animal. Every single animal has a different uh, individual marking. And uh, when the youngsters are born, the science has proved uh, that uh, we, the the males, um, sorry, the babies or the, the foals will uh, be, be shielded uh, by the mother. Anyway, thank you. Is she? Sorry, excuse me, folks. Back into Juma or back into Arathusa? Did she? Okay. Yeah, we just came through there as well, mate. So, what channel are you on, mate? Okay. Yeah, the comms are tricky, eh, with this new digital. Okay, man, thank you very much, eh? Have a great morning, everyone. Thank you, mate. We're just, um, it's always good to just, uh, talk to a, one of the guys that passes, fantastic uh, guides from Arethusa, and uh, 
just discussing where we're all struggling a little bit with the, the radio comms and listening to what's going on. So I think Peter's looking for um, Shadow and her cub. Uh, they did cross back into Juma and uh, we'll keep our eyes open. These guys have been looking around exactly the same area that we've been looking around, so she she could be anywhere, anywhere in this uh, this block in here. We're going to take a left in here anyway and see what we can see. But uh, I'm sorry, just to finish that little bit about the zebra um, before we we had to quickly chat to to uh, the guys there. <coughs> what will happen is the mother will shield the, the foal from the rest of the herd for a good 24, 36 hours to try and imprint that uh, that marking, the mother's marking on the, the baby or the foal's mind. Um, it's an interesting bit of information that's been picked over, lots of, picked up over uh, some scientific sort of uh, not experiments, but some studies that have been done, and it's it seems to be what really does happen. I'm sure it doesn't happen perfectly every time because when you do get the massive migration herds, uh, it'll be really tricky. But they have, seem to have success with it. Knows you very rarely see a zebra foal uh, off by itself without its mother. So there's something going right there, and we're never going to understand everything, folks, until we speak zebra.